Okay, guys. I'm here for the final review in the WrestleMania review series, WrestleMania 30, last year's WrestleMania. So, it's been a long series, this has, and this is the final video in the series. But it also was fun for me to go back and watch these old WrestleManias. You know, kind of helps me get in the mood for WrestleMania I really wasn't looking forward to much. Anyway, last year's WrestleMania took place on April the 6th, 2014, from Mercedes-Benz Superdome, not the Silverdome, the Superdome in New Orleans, Louisiana. Uh, even though it wasn't a match, of course, we started with the epicness of Hogan, Austin, and Rock, the three biggest icons of the WWE in a ring of a promo segment. That probably did go too long, but it was just an awesome nostalgia trip with that. But it's not getting a star rating because it's not a match. I'm only rating the actual seven matches on this card. Another WrestleMania of seven matches on a four-hour show. <laughs> Seriously, WWE, if you're going to do a four-hour show, put at least ten or tw ten or eleven, ten to twelve matches on the card. Anyway, our opening match: Daniel Bryan versus Triple H. Of course, the winner would go into the uh, WWE World Heavyweight Championship match, triple threat match in the main event. Uh, very good match. This is a five-star match. In fact, this WrestleMania doesn't have too many bad matches on it, so it's actually somewhat good. Uh, but five stars here. Daniel Bryan won as he should have. And Daniel Bryan vs. The Authority was a very hot storyline. So the right booking decision was made to put Daniel Bryan in the main event of WrestleMania. Look, 30. Uh... I never really thought there was a storyline reason to put Daniel Bryan in the main event of WrestleMania 31. That's the only reason I was against the whole him and Roman Reigns match at Fastlane. Is because, really, there was no storyline reason to put Bryan in the main event of WrestleMania 31. So, honestly, that's the only problem I ever had with some stuff about it. But, you know, this was the right booking decision here. And it was a five-star match. And adding to what Triple H did to Brian after the show, it added another, after the match, it added another element of story to later on. So five stars. Uh, so then we get the statistical worst match on here. The Shield versus Kane and the New Age Outlaws in a, like, two or three minute basic squash match. Uh, Shield wins. Simple as that. And then they would go on to feud up Evolution for two pay-per-views and then be broken up. Uh, and honestly, after Evolution, there was nothing else for the Shield to do, so you might as have well broken them up. Especially since Ambrose and Rollins have one of the hottest feuds of last year. After that. So then we get the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. A 30-man battle royal, that's a two-star battle royal. Because uh, there's a, some nice spots in here, like Kofi's save is nice. Cesaro slamming the big show over the top rope to win the Battle Royals nice. Too bad this didn't go anywhere and the WWE decided to go against the grain and keep Cesaro heel when they clearly should have just had him be face. That's why Cesaro's where he's at because the WWE did not turn him face when they had the chance to here. And it would have worked because the crowd was... Loving Cesaro for a swing, it would have worked if you turned Cesaro face, but the WWE doesn't think that. And then you go to what he said about the Cena Orton match, the uh, later in the year. You go to that, and you understand where Cesaro's at. It's kind of shame. And this battle royal doesn't mean anything now because one was on the kickoff show for for WrestleMania 31, and the Big Show won it. So, while I could argue that you do have the eye, you know, that in theory this could help make a new star, it does, it's meaningless now, so. So then we get John Cena versus Bray Wyatt. Two and a half stars. Uh, first off, Cena wins with the attitude adjustment, he pins Bray. See, this is why WWE should own with the DQ finish for Bray Wyatt here having Bray win by DQ because then 
it helps the story of Bray got in Cena's head. You know? That Bray managed to get into Cena's head and Cena got DQ'd. And that would then logically make the rematch at Extreme Rules make sense to have. Because Cena pinned Bray, that match at Extreme Rules technically doesn't make any sense. Because if you pin your opponent, it's decisive. Therefore, there's no real reason for the feud to continue. This is why you don't start feuds at WrestleMania. Okay? You start them before Mania, take them through Mania, or end them at WrestleMania. Like the Cena-Rusev thing was started at Fastlane, went for WrestleMania, and will probably end at Extreme Rules. You never start a feud at WrestleMania unless you have a wishy-washy finish. Then you can do that, but without it, no. Two and a half stars. Not a bad match. Uh, so then we get Undertaker versus Bray Wyatt. Four stars. And Brock, of course, beats the streak, which was the dumbest booking decision of this show. And quite frankly, it's half the reason that I don't look forward to WrestleMania anymore because. Without Taker's streak being intact and, you know, being undefeated, there is no point to having Undertaker wrestle anymore. Now that he's now that the streak's been defeated, there is no reason to have Undertaker wrestle. You know, it, it's just not. You know, and I've always maintained that if they were going to beat the streak, it should have been to someone who could probably do more with it, or that you could use it to actually make a star, like Bray Wyatt. The match between Undertaker and Bray should have happened here, and Bray breaks the streak, because then Bray's would have seen him most likely would not have hurt him too much. <laughs> but the way it's going, since Bray's not won a really big-time match, sure, he's good on the mic, but he can't win those big, big-time matches. And really, he should have beat Undertaker at Mania, because he essentially carried that entire feud by himself, and did very, very good work building it. But, he's just a guy who really, in terms of big matches, is all talk and no game, so to speak. So then we get the Vicky Guerrero Divas Championship Invitational, in which AJ Lee defeats the entire Diva roster. Uh, a one-star match, simple as that. And, of course, the news broke today that AJ has announced her retirement from the WWE. That does not necessarily mean wrestling, but unless she has an intention to go to TNA, you may not see her again. Uh, that's a blow to the Divas Division, but quite frankly, without the NXT women, the Divas Division minus Paige isn't good anyway. So, it's a, it's the biggest blow to the Divas Division that you could have for a while. It's kind of like the whole when Trish and Lita left, then you just had Mickey James help carry the Divas Division for a while with Mickey James and Victoria. And then Victoria left, and then you were down to just Mickey James and Beth Phoenix and Michelle McCool. Then Michelle McCool left, Beth Phoenix and Mickey James left, and really the only people to carry the Divas division are the Bella Twins, who are not the greatest in the ring or on the mic. So, I imagine AJ wants to go start a family of CM Punk, and if that's what she wants, more power to her. You know, more power to her. It's a blow to the Divas division that they're not going to recover from any until they bring up some NXT Divas. But, you know, AJ can do what she wants. Then we get the main event. The triple threat match for the world, for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Randy Orton versus Batista versus Daniel Bryan. Four and a half stars. Very good match. Daniel Bryan won by making Batista tap out. Uh... And they capped off the whole Daniel Bryan vs. The Authority thing the right way by him winning the uh, WWE World Heavyweight Championship. And of course you also get the moment of how this ended in which he went over to Connor the Crusher, uh, who was very, very sick at this time. And that's one of the first people that Daniel Bryan went to after Connor in the shape he was, sat through a four-hour show to see Daniel Bryan you know, main event WrestleMania. Uh, and Connor died less than three, oh, uh, about ni 19 days after this. So, yeah, he died a little over almost three weeks later. 
So, that was a great WrestleMania moment. And honestly, that is what this WrestleMania did right. Is it had WrestleMania moments that you will remember. The Hogan Rock Austin segment is memorable. The Daniel Bryan ending stuff is memorable. And that's what makes a WrestleMania a good WrestleMania. Okay? I mean... It's, match quality helps make a show good, but the storylines and the moments will help you remember a WrestleMania far more. And those two moments, anyway, are really what make this WrestleMania good. It's actually not a bad in-ring WrestleMania. You know, it's not a really bad in-ring WrestleMania either. It's 19 out of 35 stars, so it's in the B category. It's in the B category. So... Uh, I'm probably wrestling related. I don't know. What I'm. I don't know how I'm gonna give you in uh, April uh, because the next pay per view series I have in mind is not until uh, June, which is the Great American Bash, and then of course SummerSlam in August. So I'll probably just do some random uh, retro reviews, and I'll do Backlash 2006 sometime this month, because I was actually there, so I can actually elaborate more on that show after I watch and review it, because I was actually at that show. So, yeah. So if you liked the video, like button is down there, subscribe button is down there, and thank you for watching. Bye.